Uh, hi, Mr. Mark Merrick. Greatly appreciate your time and uh, effort to, to make this happen, even with some technical difficulties. I hope you're doing well and having a good day. I am, Drew. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Cool. Uh, um, so we'll just jump right in. Uh, you were uh, you started training in '91 with the uh, Malenkos. Is that true? Actually, 90. I, I 90? signed my first contract in 91 with WCW, but I started training in, ni in 1990. Was uh, did any of your training with the Malenkos help you get that position? Or oh, Yeah, I mean, those, Boris Malenko, the dad, was the one that really was hands-on with us, and he, he was fantastic. He was a, just a super person, man. You know what I mean? He, he didn't get a lot out of this. I mean, he didn't make a lot of money with us kids. I mean, we paid like 20 bucks here and there, you know, he, and he just, he just enjoyed helping people. And, and, you know, I, I owe so much to him for what he's done for me that I was able to, um, you know, land a spot in WCW. Um, obviously his training seemed to bore fruits. Uh, you were very talented. And of course the Malenko's, you know, also very talented people so um that that was very good for you and seemed to really help your career well you know was there when i was there you know before anybody even knew our names was sean waltman you know oh really you, yeah he was there also and uh he was just a skinny little kid man you know bumping around that ring and uh and then he did you know it's such an amazing career uh, that's really interesting, too, because kind of two of the pioneers, really, of high-flying style in the early 90s, and spe especially American wrestling. I mean, you stand out a lot, and so does uh, Sean Waltman when he was one, two, three kid, too. You guys kind of seem to really influence or change a lot of the style. You're one of the first people that were doing all those elaborate flips off the rope kind of like consistently. So what did you learn that from the Malenkos, or what, kind, what was it like to... <laughs> You know, kind of influence wrestling we didn't he didn't have us do many things off the top rope you know it, it was uh uh i learned believe it or not i learned most of that when i was a kid we used to go to this uh i was living after i i moved out of buffalo when i was um going to high school we went to uh a, a, a lake called green lakes in syracuse and uh and they had diving boards there and I would do all these, us, us, me and my crazy friends, we'd do just crazy stuff off the diving board, see if we could do two or three flips off the diving board. We probably never landed correctly, but that's where I got the, uh, the, the you know, the, the turn in midair call, you know, the one we called the, uh, I think we called that the marrow salt. And, um, you know, um, learning the, the the wild thing, you know, the, the shooting star press, they call it. Uh, I was doing that on a diving board, although I didn't land on my stomach, I'd land on my feet. But um, that's where I really learned how to do that and then just bringing it to the, uh, to the WWE. Um, that's uh, really interesting too, because the Hardy boys uh, said that they kind of learned how to do all their flips and stuff because they had their trampoline and their wrestling ring made out of trampoline in the backyard. So it's really just the kind of funny things that all really help people later on. And you have no idea at the time that, you know, doing a shooting star press as a child might be as of some use when you're an adult. Yeah. Uh, but um, so when you debuted in the WCW, you kind of had a rather flamboyant gimmick. You were a little kind of like a little Richie-esque Johnny B. Bad. Uh, were you at all worried that the flamboyant character would kind of like, limit you in some way because a lot of them i mean there's some exceptions like rick flair and gorgeous george have like flair and gravitas and have been successful but especially during the time like with gimmicky stuff were you kind of concerned for the future of your career because i mean obviously you got pushed right away so well you know here i am making you know twenty three thousand dollars a year digging in ground swimming pools and here's a six-figure contract. Right. <laughs> you weigh them out and you go, you know what? Uh, and, and not only that, Dusty Rhodes, you know, was the brain brainchild behind that character. And I worked with Dusty so much with that character. He would teach me how to walk and talk and, you know, say it like this, you know, and he'd do this. And some of the greatest memories I have was w working with Dusty learning the character Johnny B. Bad because, you know, here I am just just really out of wrestling school. I was so green, you know, 
And um, here I am being, you know, wrestling guys like Sting and Cactus Jack and, you know, uh, Ric Flair and guys that have been around the business for years. And, you know, with the, being so nervous, like going out there and not even knowing what you're doing. It was, uh, but, you know, Dusty worked with me and helped me, you know, make it more into the character where, you know, I, I could have my wrestling catch up to the character, so to speak. Yeah, Dusty, a lot of people love Dusty. I was just talking to Mr. Uh, T.J. Wilson, who's Tyson Kidd, um, with, and he was from the Hart Family Dungeon stuff as well, and he was talking about how much Dusty really impacted him too, and losing him was a really tough loss for everybody, but I was lucky enough to meet him as well as a child, and he just had such a gravity and such kindness and charm and just a brilliant mind for the business, so very... How lucky are you to, you know, have been able to work for it with him so closely, especially develop the character like that? And so blessed. Like I said, some of the greatest memories I have was working with Dusty Rhodes and losing him oh. was, was was terrible for the industry, but more more on a personal level, it hurt. You know, some of us was were, were devastated when we lost the dream. Right. Um. Yeah, he was really just incredible. It was a couple of days after my birthday. I was wrecked. That was. I was so sad, but um, so you won your first, uh, I believe, won your first WCW television title, beating William Regal. Uh, what kind of moment was winning the your your first title, major title? Did you really feel like a sense of accomplishment, like things are really starting to come together for you? It was one of the greatest moments I had. I mean, obviously, winning your first belt where the company feels that you know you're moving up the ladder to where you can you know hold a championship and be be the guy uh it was an honor um william regal steve regal is one of the best i mean he helped me along working because we worked every night you know i mean when we were in our program together and he was such an amazing and accomplished wrestler that he helped me so much and there's so many guys that they put me on the road with to learn in front of house shows the, the the business and learn the, the the psychology and the moves and everything else that were going on. I was a good athlete, so I picked it up fairly quickly, but uh, there were some guys I really owe a, a debt of gratitude to towards. Um, especially the conflict of style too. He's such a technical wrestler and you could do that as well, but especially incorporating high flying moves uh, and just a great psychological mind. I really enjoyed watching some of those older matches they I think they hold up particularly well but uh you also mentioned feeling that the company has faith in you so right after you left WCW you joined WWE and debuted at Wrestlemania so if you want to talk about having faith getting the debut on the biggest show of the year what was that like well you know um there was two times I was uh, um offered to go to each time my contract was up with WCW, I actually met with Vince mm -hmm. to structure a deal. And I told him that, you know, the first time they didn't want to offer, you know, I said, oh, I get a guaranteed contract at WCW right. and I'm not going to come here. So we, we, we parted ways with, you know, no hard feelings. It was like, you know, that's what we do here. The next time around, I said, Vince, you know, I, I want a guaranteed contract. I want a signing bonus. And I had different stipulations in my contract that he met them all. I mean, he wanted me really bad at that time. And um, it was, uh, it was, it was an honor, you know what I mean? And I always felt like I needed to go to the WWE because going to WrestleMania was like going to the dance. That's the Super Bowl right. of wrestling, you know, and having that opportunity to work WrestleMania was, was an honor. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed the, the character Johnny B. Bad so much more. I mean, that was just a, <laughs> it was so opposite of who I am. And it was just a family. <laughs> On, you know and wild man mark merrill was i never really connected with and the fans didn't connect with it it was very difficult so you know i i enjoyed the character but i'm i wouldn't change anything i have no regrets i'm glad i did it and um you know my career i i had a i i had a really good career and that's one thing you bring about the character and i know a lot of uh talents really kind of discuss how hard it is for them when they feel a disconnect with it and they're not able to do it what they what they want with it but in terms of like in ring work i know you said you had a disconnect but i mean it doesn't really show and so i think it's just really important for people to take a lot of pride in the fact that even if you have a disconnect if your quality of work doesn't suffer 
then it really shows a real dedication to your craft. Like Mr. TJ Wilson and I were talking about, that Shawn Michaels going through all of his troubles, still putting in that body of work. And that's really what sells someone, you know, and really makes a legacy. So I, sorry, I, I ran Ray, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of your entering work actually. So I, I, I talk was, about it a lot. I was blessed to work with some of the greatest wrestlers out there. When you, when you look at the, the quality of wrestlers I was able to, to work with, I mean, when you're talking about, um, you know, guys like Ric Flair, Triple H, um, Undertaker, um, you know, uh, gosh, uh, when they first put put with Ricky Morton, you know, with Rock and Roll Express, he was amazing to work with, you know, Uh, Lord Steven Regal, um, the list goes on and on, Uh, Cactus Jack, I mean, when you look at the the people that I was able to be in the ring with that I learned from and that helped me along the way and, um, and Edgar Stone Cold, Steve Austin, are you kidding? <laughs> Great match was to fly and Brian. My gosh, fall brawl, we killed it, you know. Um, and of course, my good friend Diamond Dallas Page. In fact, today is his birthday. Yeah, I saw that. I was gonna have a um, birthday to him. You know, we wrestled each other probably more times than anyone else I wrestled. Well, I, I, I think the three guys I wrestled the most, um, uh, uh, Stone Cold, because we were both in WCW and WWE together. Same thing with Triple H. You know, we're wrestling them in programs in both companies. So we were together for quite a while, for many, many years. And of course, Diamond Dallas Page, me and him, we were on the road together forever doing programs together, pay-per-view after pay-per-view. So we wrestled each other so many times. And and you become, you just build this chemistry, this this amazing work ethic and work um, quality work that you're really proud of when you look back on the matches that we were doing, you know, back then. I mean, we were talking 20 years ago now. Right, and I, you started mentioning the wrestlers you fought, but uh, when you won your first IC title, you beat like Stone Cold and Owen Hart and uh, like Farouk and everybody. So and like those are legends of the build of the industry as well. So, I mean, it's you, like you said, just been very blessed, and that was just a really great time. How fondly do you kind of look back at your whole entire career? And you know, I mean, it, it, it was such an honor. I look, I think I, I appreciate it more now as you look back than when you're doing it. You know, when you're doing it, it, it a lot of it is is work. You know, you're you're traveling; it's tough. Uh, but when you look back on your life and you say, "What are what are the things you're really proud of?" and it it opened the doors to what I do now. You know, that maybe I would never be able been able to uh, have this amazing speaking career traveling all over the I'm traveling all over the world again I mean we we spoke at schools in Russia um, before the pandemic we were in Guatemala it's just been incredible to to take what I once did and now turn it into you know helping other people uh, with the, with my speaking engagements yeah I was actually gonna mention those because I'm from Plant City Florida mm-hmm. just a little bit uh, outside of Tampa so and I know you did a lot of work uh, in kind of near central Florida. And so I've seen uh, just a lot of the, the speaking videos. Do you think that uh, working as Johnny B. Bad and being so charismatic and especially with WWE really just kind of set you up for this just like kind of perfectly? Uh, it's, a, it's a little different speaking than yeah. Johnny bad uh i don't think at schools i said once i'm so outrageous it's contagious <laughs> but uh you can't cut a promo on the kids these days uh so what's wrong with our country <laughs> well you know i mean when you get in front of a middle or high school crowd it's the toughest crowd you're ever going to be in yeah front of, you know? so i really learned how to connect with students you know and it's been a really fun process and a journey that i you know enjoy so much i mean I get letter after letter on how the program, you know, changed or even saved a kid's life. So that's the most thing. I, that's the thing, I guess, when I look back on my life, the legacy I want to leave is, you know, not how many championships I won or how much money I made or how big my house was. But the, the legacy I want to leave is the difference I was able to make in someone else's life. And that's that's a legacy I'm really proud of. And uh, what is the name of the program and where can people find out more about it? If they uh, were it's called champion choices this is my 15th year you know, how crazy is that 15 years speaking now and um our website is think pause which is p-o-z think pause.org 
And of course, go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube channel, my YouTube channel is The Mark Merrow. And uh, Mark is with a C, M-A-R-C-M-E-R-O. You can see the videos of different things that we've been able to do throughout the years. Um, of course, just Google my name on Facebook or Twitter and just at Mark Merrow and you can find me there. And I'd love to hear from a listener that heard me on this show. That'd be really cool. Yeah, uh, for sure. I'll definitely include everything. Um, just a, one more question before I know you're busy. Do you have enough time for a few more? Or um, When you mentioned that you had, a, when you first signed WWE, you want a guaranteed contract and certain stipulations. Uh, was that kind of because you, I know you've gotten hurt in WCW as well. So did you, were you really just kind of looking at your self-interest, especially with their high flying style? Um, were you just really thinking long-term knowing you can't do this forever and having your early grasp on that? Well, knowing that, you know, they were getting paid uh, per how much they drew at the house shows and so on, you know, and, and I, I didn't know anything different. I mean, from the moment I signed with WCW, my first contract was guaranteed. So, and then it doubled the next year and then doubled again. And it's just been, I had an incredible, uh, so I was used to making, you know, fairly good money and I thought I was worth it. I knew Vince really wanted me and look at it, opened the doors to every single wrestler eventually getting a guaranteed contract or most or every wrestler after me was getting guaranteed guaranteed contracts but I mean like Mick Foley and Steve Austin went before me and they never got a guaranteed deal yeah. until after I got one and so as much as I think some guys were upset that I got it uh you really look back it, it opened the doors for everyone to get it eventually you know it was like breaking that glass ceiling yeah that's uh, tremendous and I think that's really important especially with the lack of a lot of like health care and insurance because they can't love they can't work two jobs but just uh one more since you kind of brought it up with with a how was the injury or how was the medical treatment and stuff for injuries back in when you were wrestling because obviously they made much better strides now but what was kind of your experience in terms of the treatment that you received well, I mean, when I, I blew out my knee in WWE where I had to get total reconstructive surgery, um, I had ACL, medial collateral, medial collateral meniscus. I had my whole knee redone and they sent me to the best doctor in the country, Dr. Andrews in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, so I, you know, I was blessed to have one of the greatest physicians work on my knee. And, and uh, if I didn't have a scar on my knee, I wouldn't even know which knee it was. You know? <laughs> That's how good it is. So, uh, but, you know, first coming back, it was, you know, it took a while to really heal fully. So I had to be careful on, on going right back to certain moves that I would be, I'd be leery of doing. And I, I still did the wild thing off the top rope a few times, but I, I didn't, it wasn't like an every night thing. Cause remember people don't realize that you're doing that at a house show every night, you know, yeah. you're doing wrestling, you know, five, six times a week. And when you're landing on your knees off the top rope every night, it takes its toll on you. Uh, on your body because remember you're taking most of the punishment not the guy you're landing on so it it uh definitely you know i've had now i think back i've had i think i've had 14 surgeries now on you know knees elbows shoulders uh, back um i've had a lot a lot of a uh, lot of stuff done so uh but um I'm, I'm I'm the healthiest I think I've ever been well, yeah now that, you know i'm not i'm not uh you know having to take those falls anymore Especially with the DDP yoga. <laughs> wish, it, wish that had been around, huh? Yeah. I actually set up a room in my in my new home. I actually moved close to him. We we, we don't live too far from each other. Uh, but uh, instead of driving over his house every day and doing the yoga, I do it on the app. And I have my own, uh, my own kind of yoga room now. But that's great for flexibility and stuff. That's why it's so important, especially as you age, man. Flexibility yeah. is so important. That's what we lose. That's why you see a lot of older people like hunched over walking or walking real gingerly or whatever. So it, it for me, it really, uh, it really helped me out a lot. Yeah, it's really nice to see. Not as many guys are in wheelchairs anymore and stuff as like as much as it once was. There's, I mean, it's good to see that the industry is taking better care of it because it's really long overdue. And but and it's. You know, it's all about trailblazers, people that first 
make that first step like you with the guaranteed contracts in WWE. And, you know, it, that's just how the industry and every organization improves with baby steps. But I really appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Uh, it really means a lot. I know you said you have another podcast to do. So I'll make sure you have time to prepare for that and everything. But it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Great questions today. And um, I look forward to doing it again sometime. Great. Thank you. I really, uh, really do appreciate it. All right, buddy. God bless you.